I love that Trump is shaking in his boots over this trial date that is set for March. He was hoping to get it dismissed and that didn't work and now he wants to try to delay it. But that will end up blowing up in his face as well. This is for the Manhattan uh, trial where he's being charged for uh, inflating and de-inflating the values of his uh, properties so that he could get, you know, better loans or avoid paying high taxes. We begin right now with another historic day involving former President Trump. A New York judge deciding Trump's hush money payment trial will go ahead as scheduled. CBS News' Elisha Westbrook joins us live from the courthouse in Lower Manhattan. Elisha. That's right. Good afternoon, Mary. Some tense moments playing inside the courtroom earlier today as Trump's legal team tried to push the start date of this trial back beyond March 25th. Uh, we know that the judge in this case has signed off on March 25th as the day for the jury selection process to begin. All of this taking place as Trump is facing indictments in at least three different cases in separate states. Now, Trump's plan is to delay his trials until uh, uh, after the election. So if he's possibly elected president, he would be able to try to avoid uh, charges by being a sitting president. Donald Trump stopping before cameras ahead of his pre-trial hearing Thursday morning, taking jabs at prosecutors and Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. We're here for something that is not a crime. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. What it is is election interference. His bold statements come as the judge in this case confirms March 25th will be the trial start date as previously scheduled. Trump's legal team argued third. I just find it funny how Trump wants to claim like every single uh trial that he's in is election interference because he won't be able to campaign while having to deal with his trials. It's hilarious. Thursday that keeping it on that date is quote a grave injustice. They say it complicates matters as the former president has to show up to other court cases in separate jurisdictions. A heated Well that's Trump's fault. Is it not that he has to deal with separate trials in separate different states? I mean, anybody else that had uh, a court case in a separate state that they lived in or was in at the moment, it's up to them to go show up for that court case and deal with it. And if you have two different uh, court cases in two different states, well, it's still on you to deal with those court cases. The exchange between Trump's lawyer and the judge ensued after his lawyer kept pushing the envelope that Trump has no time to prepare for these separate cases and that a later start date is ideal. We want to lay uh, Trump is not special just because he has multiple uh, court dates he has to deal with. He wants to be special. But he's not. He's obviously I'm running for election. I can't. How can you run for election and be sitting in a courthouse in Manhattan all day long? In this matter, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg has charged Trump with 34 counts of falsifying internal records within the Trump organization by hiding payments to his former lawyer, Michael Cohen. Prosecutors say Cohen helped Trump cover up a relationship with adult film star Stormy Daniels and Playboy model Karen McDougal. We also know the former president is accused of paying. And this guy is supposed to be like a Christian evangelical family man who is appointed by God. Yeah, he is uh, uh, fornicating with uh, prostitutes and having multiple affairs on his wife. I thought uh, cheating was a bad thing for uh, Christians to do off a Trump Tower doorman who claimed to have a story about Trump having a child out of wedlock. But Trump is denying those allegations. If found guilty, he could face up to four years in jail and would be unable to pardon himself if re-elected as president. Ooh, 
four years in jail and unable to pardon himself. That's awesome. Then since this is a state case. And back out here live in Lower Manhattan. Joining us right now is a very Yeah, pardons only work for like federal charges and stuff like that. Uh, state stuff, well, you're gonna have to deal with it. With the uh, uh, Rico, Rica, the uh, Georgia Rico case, uh, uh, there it's uh, mandatory that you do your entire time. So if Trump does lose that case, you'll have to spend his entire time in jail. Which, if he does become president, just means he's going to spend his entire presidency while in jail. Very own Alice Gaynor, who was actually inside the courtroom, so you essentially had a first-hand account on everything that was transpiring. What can you tell us? What was the energy like, the vibes like? inside that courthouse. Well, Elijah's security, as you can imagine, was very tight, much like the other trials. We had to go through two uh, metal detectors, two security screenings, and we were locked into that courtroom. In fact, I only just got out of here about 15 minutes ago, even though he left a while ago. We had to wait for him to leave the area. Court lasted about an hour, 45 minutes. He did not speak the former president. His lawyers did the talking for him, of course. As you mentioned, the judge uh, was going through motions. He denied that motion to throw this case out. Uh, he said that the trial will continue uh, on March 25th. That's when jury selection is going to begin. They were also going over uh, potential questions for prospective jurors. There was some debate over a few of the questions that both sides had posed, so they were uh, going over that as well. What was different this time was he walked in and he looked at everyone on both sides of the gallery. He even waved at somebody. As opposed to back in April when he was arraigned, he walked in, didn't look at anyone, looked straight forward, was very serious. Today he felt, it almost felt like he was a little bit more casual when he walked into this criminal.